Well, hello, eyes on the road, safety first. So, crazy confessional stories of an Uber Lyft driver, episode number, I think this is 14, I don't know. Look at the title of the video and you'll, and you'll see. But yesterday, I picked up a really interesting fellow, a war veteran. I picked him up from the hospital. He was in a wheelchair, barely made it into my car. By the way, you should know, uh, every dollar I make from this goes towards my affordable housing project. I never save any of it or spend any of it for me or on myself, none of that. Um, and I'll get into that at the very end of this video. But this really interesting war veteran gets into my car. I'm taking him from the hospital to his home. Um, it was a little bit of a lengthy drive, lots of time to talk and stuff. Very cool guy. He did five tours. Uh, I think he said three tours in Iraq, two in Afghanistan or something like that. But I was picking him up from the hospital because he took a bullet to the chest, not because of military life and serving overseas, but he came back home and somebody mistook him for somebody else, for a, you know, a, a bad drug deal, I guess. You know, how stupid is that? And shot this poor guy in the, in the chest, just point blank. And so he lived, he was, it put him into a coma for five or 45 days, yeah, four or five. And he woke up and he didn't know what the hell was going on. He didn't even know he was shot, but he was, obviously when he came out of it 45 days later, they caught him up on the, what's going on in the world and his life in particular. Apparently his house had burned down during that time. It's like, oh my God, he lost everything. Um, and he was recovered from this bullet wound. Thankfully the guy that shot him, they got him in custody and, and uh, apparently he got 60 years for it. The guy was 39 years old, so basically he's in jail for life. Good. People like that should not be out on the streets. Uh, so this war veteran comes home and takes a bullet to the chest because somebody mistook him for a, a bad, you know, somebody else regarding a bad drug deal. And uh, he also went on to tell me when he was in the military, he was in it for 18 and a half years. And during that time, his uh, last deployment, I guess he took a 50 caliber machine gun round, uh, I guess, to his hips. I don't know if you're familiar with 50 caliber rounds, but those are the ones they put on the big Gatling guns and like the A-10 Warthog. Google it, you'll see what I mean. Those aren't even, those are so powerful that they're not even intended for humans. They're intended to rip through tanks, bullets that are so big and so powerful and so lethal. They're made to rip through metal tanks. He took one of those in his hip. He said it cut him in half. I don't know how he lived through that, but he has a, apparently, He's got a fake hip now. I don't know if the whole hip is fake, but he'll be walking with a limp the rest of his life. But he decided that was enough at that point, uh, got out. But because he sustained that in the military and you know during the time of war, obviously he got medals, he got a Purple Heart. His health care is covered for the rest of his life, thankfully. Um, he's earned it, that's for damn sure. So he'll never have to worry about that. But then he comes back home, gosh, on domestic land. And then we start talking about, you know, deeper issues beyond that. It's like, yeah, you think you're safe when you're home, but there's bad people that want to kill you, you know. There's bad people that want to kill people and do horrible things to people no matter where you are, foreign and domestic. There's enemies foreign and domestic for different reasons and in different ways. And then we got to talking about especially in this country, and in particular with guns, how oh, it's a unique problem in the world. And this holds true, the overwhelming majority of military personnel, you know, the people that really know high-powered weapons and guns, they're in favor of a universal background check and closing the gun show loophole and good regulation, including this guy. We're like, yeah, over 30,000 people a year are the victims of gun violence. And every day there's a mass shooting in this country. In 2017, we had more mass shootings as defined as four or more people per shooting uh, than there were days in the year last year. And uh, so that was really interesting and, and just holds true that the overwhelming majority of people, you know, law enforcement, military, people that actually know these kinds of weapons, we want to protect the Second Amendment, but we want checks and balances, and we want good regulation, and um, we want to protect law-abiding citizens' rights to own firearms and to bear arms. And this guy said, you know, he's, he's a card-carrying uh, firearms holder. And I'm like, yeah, damn right, man. I, I, I think that's awesome, and we want to keep them out of the hands through, legis through legislation, not thoughts and prayers and unity and all that stuff, but through legislation. And uh, even the NRA card-carrying members are on the same page about that. It's the leadership of the NRA. They're the enemy. 
the leadership of the gun manufacturers and the politicians that are successfully and illegally bribed with lots of money by NRA leadership and gun manufacturer leadership. They're the enemy. The card carry members are not. We're all on the same page here. And then, of course, there's one or two crazy people, constituents out of the, you know, every couple hundred, there's one or two out of a couple hundred that take the same position as the NRA leadership and the bribed politicians and the gun manufacturer leadership. And these one or two constituents out of every couple hundred or so, they're not even being bribed. They just have that position because in this one area, they're really dumb. Um, but uh, I, I just wanted to make this video to tell you about this war veteran, this hero, this patriot, and, um, and also I guess there's a cause behind this video. One, be grateful that there's people willing to go overseas um, and fight for this country. And two, the second cause of this video, I suppose, is um, where there's more solidarity. 97% of the population were in solidarity between military, law enforcement, regular everyday people, NRA carrying mem card carrying members. We're all on the same page. We want universal background check and close the gun show loophole. And we want to protect the rights of law-abiding people to own guns. And we need the legislation to get the guns out of the hands of people that do not follow the law and mentally unfit people. And, and, uh, and there's over 130 studies, all objective studies, that show if we enact those kinds of regulations, it does chip away at the gun violence quite significantly. There's uh, literally no studies that show the opposite. Because I know I've got a couple friends that believe, oh, gun laws won't change anything. And there's nothing uh, that supports that claim. There's over 130 some odd studies that support the opposite. So I can see if there was no studies done, there's a void to fill. It's like you could guess one or the other, but but there's uh, there's no guesswork here. There's no wiggle room. Um, checks and balances would chip away at the gun violence, and it would protect the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens. So that goes in the face of all the objections, really, about that. Um, and we have to get all the money out of politics. That's something that we're also in solidarity about. 90-something uh, or 80-something percent of the country on that one. We want to get the money out. Because uh, by default, when politicians accept bribe of money, legal or otherwise, inherently there is a conflict of interest. Doctors and lawyers and so forth get involved in conflicts of interest. They can be sued. They lose their license to practice. Politicians can do it. And they have the power to, you know, destroy a lot of people's lives. And morality, yeah, here's, here's the other big one. We need to... Uh, we need to bolster up, you know, morality. We're not a moral country or whatever. It's like, yeah, we need to do that too, but we also need legislation. Can you imagine if we had one without the other? Well, we'd have what we have now, over 30,000 gun deaths a year. So we need to address both. Bo bo bolster up the morality, you know, the cultural issue, as well as legislation. Because there's, no matter what we do morally, there's always going to be those individuals out there that want to kill with a gun, no matter what. So... And, uh, and criminals, you know, don't care about laws. So what a perfect reason to have gun regulation that bans um, the gun show loophole, or closes the gun show loophole, and requires a universal background check. The fact that there's always going to be somebody, a crazy person, that wants to kill people with a gun. Perfect reason to have those regulations. So we have to have them. Otherwise, if we have information, someone's going to do something bad, uh, we can't do anything about it because there's no regulation. And if someone does do something bad with a gun, um, well, it can't be prevented anymore at that point, but if, once it's historical, we can prosecute. So for just in terms of getting law enforcement, the tools and resources uh, to one, prevent when they can, and two, prosecute if it's already happened, we need things like that in the books regulation. Otherwise, uh, it's not prosecutable and we can't prevent it. So that's a really bad argument when people say, yeah, well, criminals don't follow the law anyway. Well, what a perfect reason to have those laws in place so that law enforcement has tools and resources we can chip away at the, at the gun violence. Okay, went off on a tangent there. Um, God bless our troops. <laughs> and this guy I had in my car, cool guy. And last but not least, I said at the end of the video, so how do I afford to do ride sharing and I don't keep any of the money for myself? Well, over 10 years ago, I got involved in a home business. I took on a new learning curve I had no idea about, but I, from scratch, I just learned how to add health and wellness and fitness to our lives and make residual money doing so from online, on a computer, at home, 
and uh, it only took me a couple years or two and a half years to where I didn't need a job anymore. Uh, building it, it was about 20 minutes a day I spent consistently, so doing it in my spare time, so I had no time, but I was able to take on that learning curve and two and a half years into it, I, you know, I didn't need a boss anymore. And that was a really long time ago, so I've been job free for a long time now. But if that turns you on, private message me. I'll show you what I've been doing. And if there's a sincere interest after you get some information about it and you like learning new stuff, then we'll just take it from there. So private message me about that, and I'll see you soon at my website, TomBerkenmeyer.com. Just like it's spelled here on social media, TomBerkenmeyer.com. But private message me because we're human beings. We're supposed to have conversations. So I'll see you later. Bye. Mwah.